Hi Chookies, Cheryl and Bans here. Yes, I've come back. I know it has been a long time since I've done a YouTube. I just needed a little bit of time to myself to recharge my batteries sort of thing. Not actual batteries, it's like um like my batteries, like a like in not inside me. Um like it's like a figure of speech. It's like I've got to recharge my batteries like I'm worn out and my batteries are run down so I need to recharge them so I so I've got more energy like not inside me um do you hear what I'm saying to you it's like I'm run down like my batteries are running out if I was a machine what operates on batteries and they're running down so I need to replace them do you get what I'm saying to you Anyway, so I had a bit of time to myself. I have been in a lot of pain. A lot of you know that I have had a lot of um, traumatising trauma in my life. I'm covered in scars, mainly inside my mind. But the thing what you don't know is my body. Uh, my body has been in a lot of pain, physical pain, recently. So anyway, I have a new stories time for you. And you guessed it, yes. It is about a mole. A mole, what was at the mall. The mall. Yeah, so the New Year's Eve, what just went past, I was thinking we should go down to Koshigai Park and watch the fireworks. Every New Year's Eve, they have the bastard down at Japanese Park in Campbelltown, Koshigai Park. So I said to Terry, um, we should go to the fireworks in Koshigai Park. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. We can head down at 8 o'clock and we'll make it in time for the fireworks. And I said, no, Terry, we're not going down that early. He goes, yeah, the fireworks are at 9 o'clock. I said, Terry, I want the midnight New Year's Eve fireworks. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, let's just watch the 9 o'clock ones. I said, Terry, the 9 o'clock fireworks are for, like, little kids and old people and, and, and people what's got stuff wrong with them. I said, it's New Year's Eve. Get fucked. I want to watch the midnight fireworks. I'm not fucking celebrating at 9 o'clock. And then he starts fucking kicking up a stink. Oh, for fuck's sake. I said, fine. Terry, fucking forget it. Just fucking forget it. And then he's like, oh, we can go to the midnight fireworks. I said, no, forget it. You're fucking taking your emotions out of me. I'm fucking sick of it. You know, if it's something what he wants, he's always very persistent trying to get me to suck his thing. But the only thing he will suck is the joyride out of me sometimes. I'm fucking sick of it. You know, so I went to my room and closed the door and I just started crying relentlessly for hours on end. And he kept coming in he's like you all right you all right you know trying to make me smile and stuff and I, I just ignored him until eventually he comes in his demand he's like why are you fucking crying this time so i laid it on him i said you know the other day was terry it was fucking boxing day he goes yeah right, boxing day you don't have to cry over it and i just looked at him and i just said to him i said terry fucking boxing day a day what I watched two of my best girlfriends drown to their deaths and it was my fault and they're gone and they're never coming back and I'll never see them again and it was all my fault and at that point I just broke down I was bawling and then bless him he actually did comfort me a little bit he said it's not your fault I said maybe you're right Terry but it it always feels like my fault. But I do feel guilty. I actually do always think about them a couple of times every few years. But um, let me know in the comments if you think their deaths are not my fault. So anyway, he goes, do you want to go to the midnight fireworks? And I just looked at him and I said, yes, I'd like that. Fast forward later that night, we drove down to Queen Street, like the main drag of Campbelltown so we could park, get a spot and walk down, go see the, the fireworks and whatnot. We get down there and the place is packed tighter than Lizzo's built after lunch. Nowhere to park, not a single spot in sight and I said alright well why don't we go try the, the car park at the RSU. So we went there, packed, and we went to the old Chinese restaurant, the, the car park out there packed and I thought that'd be fucking right they come to our New Year's Eve but if, if I go to theirs it's appropriation 
So Terry suggests we go down to Campbelltown Mall. I said, Terry, that's the worst idea. The car park is right next to Koshigai Park, so every bastard's going to be parking there. But he goes, let's just go and check. You know, but we get there and I was right. It was fucking chaos central. Cars fucking flying out of every crevice. There was fucking space, um, idiots crawling around everywhere. And Terry's like scratching his head trying to figure out what to do. And I said, just inch in bit by bit. That's all we can do now. You know, because there's now cars behind us at this point. And I said, I fucking told you this was not a good idea. So we creeping bit by bit and the next thing you know there's this big fucking american style four-wheel drive <laughs> honking the fucking horn at us so i look over and there's this chubby bird behind the wheel and a husband or boyfriend or whatever next to her and then a boy and go uh, kids in the back and she's looking right at me honking the horn and i just looked at her and i just went you know, look, like, fuck you, there's fucking cars everywhere, what do you want us to do? So she hops down out of the car and she's like going, and like mouthing off to us. I couldn't understand a word she was fucking saying. She's pointing and she's pointing and she's going like this. So I wind down the window and I'm trying to talk to her and she's fucking mouth, mouth, mouth. And eventually I just said, fuck you. And I wound the window back up. So she gets back in her car and I can see she's talking to the husband and she's going, like that to us, like carrying on at the husband, and I, I saw him shake his head, and she looked pissed off, so I reckon she was telling him to go and have a go at us, and he didn't want to do it. So she gets out of her car, she comes around and walks around Terry's side of the car, and then she's like yelling at him through the window. We couldn't hear a word she was fucking saying. You know, and then she starts knocking on the window, knocking on the window. So I was like, go away, fuck off. And then I saw Terry go and push the, the button on the window. I said, no, just ignore her. So he winds it down. So she's fucking mouthing off, mouthing off. I said, darling, stop screeching. Calm down. She said, please, just let us get through. We've been trying to get through for 10 minutes. I said, darling, look around. It's the biggest holiday of the year. I said, everyone here is trying to get somewhere because obviously the people what would watch the 9 o'clock fireworks... They're all trying to get out. And then you got people like us trying to get in. It was absolute chaos. She said, yeah, we've been trying to get out for 10 minutes. I said, yeah, we've been trying to get in for 10 minutes. She goes, you have not. You only just got here. And then she goes, don't be selfish. We've got kids. So I said, yeah, well, so do we. And she goes, oh, well, where are they? I said, they're in fucking Nanya. And then she starts screeching again. And she's like pointing through the through the window at, at Terry and at me, like, pointing like this. And I was, like, swiping her and I was like, get your fucking hands out of the car. And then she's like, you need to this and this and this. And I grabbed her by the finger and I just fucking slammed it out the window. And then she goes, don't touch me. And I said, don't come in our car, that's assault. So she starts fucking doing it again. And I leant over Terry at that point and I just pushed the button. Window was going up. She goes, you fat fucking muck to me. So when she was walking back to her car, I went on the window down. I said, look at you. You're not skinny yourself, darling. And I said, look at you. You might be younger than me, but you look older than me. I look way better than you. And Terry goes, oh, fucking stop it. You know what he did? Terry gets out of the car, signals the cars behind us to back up. And they fucking do it. And then he let this bitch go right past us out of the car park. And I said to him, I said, Terry, you're a fucking idiot. Do you know how weak that makes you look? And now all the other cars behind her are coming through as well. So she was driving past us real slow and she was laughing. I'll never forget what she did. So through Terry's window, I'm just like, fuck you, bitch, fuck you, fuck up. So anyway, over half an hour later, we eventually get a park. Made our way down to the park for the fucking festivities. At this point, I was just in a foul mood. Families lingering around everywhere with their kids way past bedtime. Ridiculous. Kids need routine. What is the point of having nine o'clock fireworks if you're just going to bring your children to the adults only fireworks? That is fucking ridiculous to me. So Terry can see I'm in a bad mood and he starts sucking up my ass, something chronic. He's like... Would you like a Pluto pup? Pluto pup. Pluto pup. Look, that's going to fucking fix anything. I said, no. Uh, for the people down in Melbourne, Pluto pup is Dagwood dog. 
So don't, don't ask me what a Pluto pup is. It's a, it's Dagwood dog is the Melbourne word for Pluto pup. So he asked me if I wanted a Pluto pup. I said no. So he runs off to the top and he comes back and he's holding two Pluto pups. He's like, got you something. So I took it and I walked over to the bin and I shoved it right in the bin. I told him. I said no. And he goes, so you're just going to throw the bastard out. And I said, I told you I didn't want one. And then he goes, you know, these kids starving in Vanuatu. I said, well, go to fucking Vanuatu and go and give it to them if you're that fucking concerned. But I told you, no, I don't want a Pluto pup. Anyway, so we walked around and just had a look at stuff and they had this band on this big stage sort of thing and they were playing all this music and Terry's like, oh, yeah, this is a grouse. Do you want to watch? And I said, no, not really. And he's like, please. So I let him, you know, so we go watch them for a little bit in this band, they're playing um, Believer, you know, the, the Shrek song. I'm a believer. So Terry's dancing to it and I got the ick, big time. You should have seen him. It was so cringe, I was embarrassed. He can't dance. You know, so I was starving at this point, so I walked off and I got a battered self. Battered self, battered self. Got a battered self because I can't stand it when they've got the stick through it. So I ate my battered self and then I walked back to, to the band. So Terry is dancing to Dancing Queen, ABBA, Dancing Queen, um, with these old ladies. And there was another guy there as well. He was LGBT. I said, Terry, come here. So he comes over and I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm dancing to Dancing Queen. I said, you look like a dancing queen. Stay away from those people. So next minute he's trying to dance with me and I said, piss off, you can't dance. He's like, you're no fun, which is a load of shit. Let me know in the comments if you know I'm fun. I am fun. Don't fucking tell me I'm not fun. I'm very fun. So Waterloo comes on and he starts dancing like a two-bob watch. And I said, right, after Waterloo we're going. And he's like, oh, piss off, we're not going. I said, no, I've got a migraine. He said, what about the fireworks? I said, no, fuck the fireworks, we're going home. Yeah, so then he really wanted to piss me off and he went back to those disgusting ladies and started dancing with them and he was actually dancing with the gay LGBT man. It was fucking weird. So Waterloo finishes. I said, Terry, we're going. So anyway, we walked back to the car park at the mall and because we left early, it actually wasn't that busy and we ended up getting out relatively easily so we're heading home right and we're going down um like one of the main roads in Bradbury guess what I saw <laughs> a big American style four-wheel drive wrapped around a pole <laughs> oh I shouldn't laugh I should I, I know I shouldn't laugh you know and I nudged Terry I said look who that is and we looked and it was the um, the the European lady, the bitch from the car park at the mall. We drove up closer to him. So the man, the the dad, he was like holding the kids and they looked fine. And so there was an ambulance and then the lady, she was sitting in the gutter, blood all down her face. So the medic, he was like helping her. I said, Terry, Terry, stop here for a second. So we drove up and I wound down the window and I just looked at him. And she looks up at me, and I just looked at her, I said, Calm as a bitch, ain't it, darling? <laughs> you know, the look on her face was fucking priceless, and I'm just cackling at her like a fucking, like a kookaburra. <laughs> so then we were driving off, and guess what? Midnight fireworks, all in the sky. <laughs> so I did actually get to see the fireworks. So it felt like a like a magical moment or something. Driving off and I look back and all I see is like her looking stunned. Breaking glass all on the ground. Fireworks going off. It was actually quite beautiful. And it's true. Don't mess with me. Black magic is real. I'm protected by the lady and the lord of the south. Come as a bitch and then you die. Well, you almost die. <laughs> Yeah. You almost die. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, so I'm pissing myself laughing and Terry's like, that's a lot of laughter coming out of a lady what has a supposed migraine. I said, Terry, you're just jealous because I break up the fucking kosher guy or gays and lesbians Mardi Gras parade. <laughs> oh, he went and added them all on Facebook. He reckons they're friends and they're going to meet up. <laughs> yeah, so the moral of the story is please, please, please do not mess with me because sometimes I do I don't even have to do anything because my guides are always around me and they will protect me whether I want them to or not. So, you want to play with fire? I'm a fire sign. If you want to play with fire, then please be my guest. But don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah, so there is actually uh, a little bit more to this story. So let's just say my body... Um, it's been in a lot of pain these days. I'll just say that. Um, if you want me to make a YouTube about it, let me know in the comments. <sighs> um, if you don't, then fine. Don't worry about it and I won't, I won't tell the rest of my story. But, uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. Uh, please add me on my Instagram site at Cheryl and Barnes. Make sure you leave comments and share all my things on your stories. Do every certain sort of thing what you can do with my Instagram site. Um, if you want me to do a cameo for you, for one of your friends, your parents, enemies, whatever you want, make sure you book me on cameo and I will try my best. Um, add me on my X site as well at Cheryl and Barnes uh, make sure you click subscribe and let's leave it at that big pussy kiss and ciao for now my chuckies